Bonjour tout le monde, I am back again for the second half of your lesson about this new opinion piece topic of protesting and stuff. So if you weren't here um, for the last one, um, I'm Katie and I'm the French and Spanish teacher up here in the academy and this is for sixth year higher level French. Um, just to kind of try and trying to keep the ball rolling with a little bit of written work just because obviously the oral exams are a little bit up in the air and we don't want to fall too far behind. What I would do though, if you didn't watch the last video, which is part one, definitely go and watch that first because this might seem a little bit overwhelming. We don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do again, same thing as the last lesson, um, I'm just going to give you your five verbs I have them written up here for you. So if you want to pause the video now and give these a go, um, we've got there would be, she wants to leave, we will be, I must do my homework and I have to get 500 points, okay? So if you give them a go or if you want to just wait until I'm going through them, um, while you're trying them I'm just going to fill in your phrase du jour. So again, lovely kind of idiomatic phrase of the day, a lovely way to um, talk about maybe how you're feeling kind of after the whole coronavirus thing, um, how you're feeling in general as a sixth year in your oral exam. Um, so obviously we've got the verb here, être, so we're just going to conjugate that as normal. So if I was going to say, um, I would, if I was talking about myself, I would say, je suis à la ramasse, okay? Et ça veut dire en anglais, to be overwhelmed, so I feel very overwhelmed. Okay, um, and just be careful, you can't use that to say like the situation is overwhelming or something that is just specifically the adjective overwhelmed, okay? So, je suis vraiment à la ramasse, I'm really, really overwhelmed, or tout le monde est à la ramasse, okay? So, everyone is very overwhelmed. Okay, so that's your phrase du jour. Now, let's have a look at these five verbs again, okay? So, there would be, so obviously, my key word here is the word would, and that is, um, as a few of my fifth years like to call it, the mot qu'on est in French, okay, it's the conditional tense. So there would be, il y aurait, so the conditional of the verb il y a, okay, there is or there are. Okay, she wants to leave, so I've got elle, v with a t, and then the verb to leave is quitter. And again, if you weren't um, here, for, if you weren't here for part one, sorry, I feel so weird saying that, but if you weren't here for part one, um, I was saying that these are what we call modal verbs in grammar, so that they're always followed by the infinitive, okay, they're kind of like helping verbs, so to want, to have to, to know, all of those kind of things, okay. Now, we will be, nous serons, and I might even just write in brackets beside that, that is être in the future simple, so être in the distant future, so our key word here is will. Okay, and it is obviously very irregular, okay? But maybe if you have any um, experience even with like junior cert Spanish or something, you'll know that this verb here, ser, is the verb to be in Spanish as well. So that is just a little way of trying to remember it, okay? Now, I must do my homework, je dois. So again, another mode of verbs, we've got I must, we will, whatever, she wants. Okay, sorry, we will is the one I just saw the line underneath it, okay? So I must and she wants are my two modal verbs here. So je dois, and the verb to do we know is faire. Now my homework, mes devoirs. Okay, and that is why your homework is called your devoir, because devoir is the verb to must, and you must do your homework, okay? So we should do a fair my devoir. Now I have to get 500 points, and we have a couple of ways of saying this, right? So I'm going to kind of just put A and B beside these. So if you're maybe, um, I suppose, in a position where you're struggling a little bit with French, what we could do is just keep it nice and easy. So use the same verb again as I must, je dois. And then the verb to get or to obtain, so obtenir. 500 points. Okay, je dois obtenir 500 points. That's perfect grammar and that's lovely and simple. If you're maybe trying to show off a little bit, and you can use this in your oral exam, okay? So il faut que. Now, and I, as a student, got this drilled into me for my oral exam as well. So this is a lovely way of getting the subjunctive in, okay? Um, and the reason that our French teacher would have had us learn this is because this is a very obvious sounding um, subjunctive verb, okay? So it's lovely for your oral exam, right? Il faut que, it's necessary that, that's always going to trigger the subjunctive, so maybe avoid that if you're not too comfortable with the subjunctive. And then we've got que j'obtienne. Now if you are going to say that, please pronounce that correctly, okay? Because otherwise it's going to get you on your grammar marks and your pronunciation, okay? Il faut que j'obtienne 500 points, okay? So there are your five verbs for today. Now, what we're going to be having a look at um, today is kind of going from what we were just covering in the last class, which is all about, obviously, background information about protesting and demonstrations and les gilets jaunes, all of that kind of stuff. 
Um, but we're going to try and actually start working this into an answer and then have a look at a sample answer from those notes as well, okay? So, um, what I'm going to do, first of all, I've filled these bits in already, so maybe if you want to try and start taking these down, just to kind of reiterate the simplicity of an opinion piece at its most basic level, okay? So, again, we're going to have our introduction, our points, and our conclusion. Now, if you're maybe a student who hasn't been in any of my classes, um, or you're maybe a little bit overwhelmed in French, whatever, I just want to kind of like get rid of all of the unnecessary drama surrounding the opinion pieces, okay? I've had students message me on Instagram, email me, whatever, saying, Katie, like, um, my teacher's telling me I have to write five points, I have to write three pages. You don't, okay? And saying that, I also don't agree with what the SEC have on the exam papers, which is literally like write 75 or 90 words. That's six sentences. And I don't know any student who writes six sentences and can express the same level of French and show off the French they have versus a student who's going to write an A4 page, okay? So in terms of what I would see most often, I would say for your question one opinion piece, so your obligatory question, I would tend to see about three quarters to an A4 page. That doesn't mean that you have to write that, but that is what I would see more often than not, okay? Then if you are going to do the question three or four opinions, um, I tend to kind of call them reaction questions sometimes, just to try and differentiate between them because otherwise people think that you have to do this for both questions. Again, I would see maybe two thirds to three quarters of an A4 page for these because obviously they're worth 10 marks less. Now, I also don't want anyone looking at that and freaking out because they've never written that much. Again, th there's no, and this is what's so annoying, there are no actual specifications. This is just what I would tend to see students produce for French, okay? So, basically, right, so what I'm going to do is, let me get my blue marker, sorry. All right, so, in terms of structure, right, and structure is something that is so often overlooked in class, okay? Teachers will say, Here's lovely phrases, there'll be loads of lovely phrases, loads of lovely French words, whatever to use in your answer, but then they'll completely forget or maybe spend a little bit less time actually showing you how to work that into a coherent answer that an examiner is going to enjoy reading and find very easy to kind of make sense of. Um, so I would always recommend, it doesn't have to be a very flowery, very fancy introduction or conclusion, but I would always, always recommend having some sort of statement to introduce your ideas. Then words that you can use to actually introduce your ideas one by one and then kind of summarize the whole thing, right? So the first thing that I need to know as an examiner is if I'm asked for your opinion or your reaction or something, I need to know what it is, right? So basically what I'm gonna do up here, again, just to kind of do a little bit of revision, I'm going to give you a phrase to say you agree with the statement, a phrase to say you disagree, and a phrase to say that you have mixed feelings about it. Now, if you are going to say that you have mixed feelings about something, just be careful because you will then have to explain why you have mixed feelings. You might have to explain both sides of your opinion, um, which is absolutely fine. And if you're able to do that, that's perfect. But if you say you have mixed feelings and then all of a sudden your whole answer is about you agree with the topic, that's going to get you in your content marks. And it could also affect you in your language marks as well because an examiner could interpret it as misuse of French language at some stage that your answer as well, okay? So just be aware if you are going to say you have mixed feelings, okay? So we're going to start off with, so my agreement, so I agree with the statement to go on with a tick. I'm going to say, je suis complètement d'accord avec cette affirmation. Okay, and the reason I've got two T's and an E in that word set is because this word affirmation is feminine because it ends in an I-O-N. So again, everything has to match. So I'm going to have feminine article, feminine name, okay? So, je suis complètement d'accord avec cette affirmation. And um, if you're in my day school or my grinds, you'll know in your notes you have lovely phrases as well to say things like, I support this idea, um, if you're trying to have things that are a little bit different. But if I was going to give you the most basic one, the easiest one to learn, that's that one there, okay? Now, if I'm going to say I disagree, um, I might actually go one step further and say, je suis, and then just to give you a different adverb, so totalement, en contre de cette, and then you could also use the word déclaration, okay, which again is still feminine because it ends in an I-O-N. Okay, and what I'm saying here, it's a little bit kind of stronger. I'm saying I'm actually against this statement. It's not even that I don't agree with it. I'm completely against it, okay? 
So I just think that sometimes that's a little bit of a nicer way to actually show the examiner what your true opinion is, okay? Now, if I can't make up my mind, like all of us ladies, I'm going to say, j'ai, so I have, des sentiments mixed en concernant or I could just say de cette affirmation. You could also use the word idée for idea if you like. Okay, so just so this makes sense, right? So again, the reason I'm using J here, I'm not going to say I am mixed thoughts or mixed feelings, I'm going to say I have. Um, I'm using here, I'm using day because I'm just talking about in general, I'm talking about them as some. I don't want to say I have the mixed feelings, okay? I just want to say I have some. So J des sentiments as feelings mixed. Now I'm either going to say en concernant cette affirmation, surrounding this statement, or I'm just going to say I have mixed feelings of this statement. So maybe if you struggle a little bit with French spelling and stuff, you might just want to go with the word de instead of using en concernant. Okay, now, so that's obviously how I'm going to get my opinion across. If I am maybe trying to lengthen out my introduction a bit and then, you know, tell these examiner what it is I'm going to talk about, I can use a phrase like peur partagé mon avis je vais parler de Okay, so pour partager, right? partager is the verb to share and the easiest way to remember that is that if you share something, everybody gets a part of it. So we've got the word part there, so partager. So in order to share my opinion, I'm going to speak about whatever. So regardless of all the fancy French, if you are really struggling with your opinion piece, that's what I would just go with for the time being. Obviously don't use all three opinions, you only want to have one. Um, but it just sets up what we call in the uh, marking scheme your communicative intention and there's marks going for you fulfilling that intention so I need to know what the intention is to then award you the marks for fulfilling it, okay? Now, in terms of your points, I would usually try and say to students for, for I suppose for simplicity reasons to aim for two points or if you're very strong and you're very confident that you're not going to become irrelevant in any of your points, go for three. Um, I would definitely not go at all any, any more than three, just way, way too long, right? But we've got premièrement, deuxièmement, and troisièmement, so firstly, secondly, and thirdly. Um, so they're just the easiest ways to differentiate your points in between. Please use paragraphs as well, it's so annoying as an examiner when you just get given an A4 page of word vomit. I need to see what your ideas actually are. Okay, now some lovely phrases we can use. So, quand le voit ou non, whether we like it or not. Okay, so maybe if you want to just scribble that down. So, quand le voit ou non, so whether we like it or not. And this is from the verb vouloir, right? Il ne se passe pas une journée sans. Not a day goes by without. So, not a day goes by without um, new diagnosis of the coronavirus. So, not a day goes by without um, more pollution or whatever it is. Um, just a nice generic phrase we can use. Il y a de plus en plus de victimes, il y a de plus en plus de racisme, il y a de plus en plus de um, sexisme, whatever it is. There is more and more illness, there's more and more racism, there's more and more sexism, there's more and more pollution. Okay, just a nice, easy, generic phrase. Or, on doit faire face au fait que. We need to face up to the fact that. Okay, um, so whether that is that the world is in danger, that the environment is... Um, I suppose being harmed every day, okay? Whatever it is, we can use that um, kind of sentence structure for it, okay? Now, in conclusion, so if you think about it as an English essay, you wouldn't write an English essay in paper two without stating what you're gonna talk about in your introduction and then kind of coming back to it in your conclusion. So I would always say to my students, the first thing that you'd want to do in your conclusion is say something along the lines of, comme j'ai déjà dit. So as I have already said, little comma, and then you're going to just repeat your opinion. And I just really appreciate that, even like when I'm doing corrections in school, that it kind of, it, it just makes the text so much more coherent, okay? It's a lot easier to make sense of um, the students' answers, and it just feels finished when you see that in the conclusion, okay? So, comme j'ai déjà dit, je suis complètement d'accord avec cette affirmation. Okay, then we're going to say something like, si je pouvais, Okay, 
I'll explain this now in two seconds. I, you might want to just scribble this down as I'm writing this. So, si je pouvais, j'aimerais parler avec blank pour que pour qu'il pour qu'elle puisse. Okay. Now, especially if you are aiming for a high grade, right, and if you are maybe struggling a little bit with how to tie or how to answer up, right, what I'm saying here is this is a really, really impressive piece of um, grammar work here, okay? So just for me to explain it, so the word si in French we know is if, so if I could, si je pouvais, right, j'aimerais, I would like, conditional tense of the verb aimer, okay, parler, I would like to speak with le gouvernement, le président, les jeunes, whatever, I speak with the government, the president, young people in general, whatever. Um, pour que, pour que means so that, and it's going to trigger the subjunctive. Now, just be careful because I have this in the singular, or sorry, not in the singular, I have it in the plural. So, pour qu'il, or pour qu'elle. So that they, so whether it's a group of males, group of females, or if it's mixed, we're just going to use the group of males. So that they can, whatever. And then all you have to do with the blank here is fill in the group of people and then fill in I suppose, the name of the next verb, something so that they can understand the situation or whatever, okay? If you were going to speak about, say, like a singular name, like the government or the president or something, what you would do is get rid of this S at the end of either one of these, and then obviously make sure that it matches the gender of the person or the noun that you're discussing. And then to get rid for this to be singular, I would just drop the NT, okay? So it's a really handy piece of vocab, kind of a lovely structure to have at the end of your opinion piece to just show off a little bit and end on a high. Okay, so just to finish up with this lesson, what I want to do is have a look. Um, again, if you have these notes with you, if not, um, I'm going to be reading out this answer, so you might want to just kind of have a listen along, and if there's anything that I think you should mark, I will let you know. Okay, so just via la page numéro 10, so I'm on page 10 of your notes from last lesson, so les jeunes. And we're going to have a look at the 2012 question. Okay, so 2012, right, we've got a 30 mark question. I can't remember off the top of my head if this was question three or four. But the question is, right, so manifesté dans les rues, so protesting in the street, demonstrating in the street, whatever. C'est un bon moyen de protester contre l'injustice ou contre des décisions politiques. Êtes-vous d'accord? So protesting in the streets, demonstrating in the streets, whatever, is a good way of protesting against injustice or against political decisions. Do you agree? Okay? So let's have a look at this. So we start off with, je suis complètement d'accord avec cette affirmation. À mon avis, manifester et les protestations pacifiques sont beaucoup plus efficaces que la violence et les émeutes. Pour que vous puissiez comprendre mieux mon point de vue, je vais parler des Gilets jaunes, c'est là que nous sommes dans classe, en France, et les manifestations réalisées par les étudiants ici en Dublin contre le changement climatique. Okay? So I completely agree with the statement, in my opinion, and, what I would, and I just have my fingers crossed, so I want to remind people not to do this. I don't need you to say, à mon avis, je pense, à mon avis, je crois. I wouldn't say, in my opinion, I think, or in my opinion, I believe. Either just say, I think, or I believe, or in my opinion, and then continue on with your sentence, okay? So in my opinion, protesting and peaceful protests are much more efficient, much more effective, but beaucoup plus efficace than violence, and then les mutes are kind of like um, riots, or very kind of, I suppose, slightly more, dangerous versions of protesting, okay? So that you can better understand, pour que vous puissiez, and I'm addressing the examiner formally there, okay? Or if I wanted to, I could just use this phrase instead. But so that you can better understand my point of view, I'm going to speak about the gilets jaunes in France and the protest, now réaliser is the verb to carry out. And I have an ES because I'm talking about manifestation, which is feminine plural, okay? And the um, protest carried out, par is by, by the students here in Dublin against climate change. Depuis novembre 2018, les Gilets jaunes ont lutté contre les injustices sociales et les décisions politiques en France. Même s'il y a eu des événements violents comme les incendies à Paris et Toulouse et les émeutes contre les gendarmes, le mouvement des Gilets jaunes est, pour la plupart, un mouvement pacifique. Okay, so even just to read through what we have there so far, this is a little bit more of a complex paragraph, okay? So, since November 2018, so depuis there I'm using as the word since, the Gilets jaunes have fought en lutte, have fought against social injustices and political decisions in France. Okay, so like we were saying in last class, um, obviously it started off as a kind of more, I suppose, 
um, peaceful way of protesting, but things have kind of got a little bit more momentum and are escalating a little bit, okay? Now, mem C, what I would maybe get you to mark there is that mem C means although or even though, and it is followed by the indicative, so just your normal verbs, okay? So I've got the past tense there after, le passé composé. If you're maybe trying to show off a little bit, you could use the word bianca, okay? And that means the same thing, but it takes a subjunctive after it. But for the time being, I would focus more on getting mem C and your verb after it correct, okay? So even though, or although, there have been violent events such as the fires in Paris and Toulouse and like riots or, you know, violent demonstrations against les gendarmes or police, the movement of the yellow vest of les gilets jaunes is, for the most part, a, a peaceful movement. Ils utilisent, they use um, protests in the streets such as des barrages routiers or roadblocks and these, um, I suppose, these demonstrations have been very efficient, very effective, okay? C'est le président Macron a annoncé des changements dans le système des emplois en France grâce aux demandes des Gilets jaunes. Okay, so this is kind of like I'm talking about now, I'm coming back to the title, I'm saying, well, if this happened and there was no, like, even if there hadn't been any violence, I'm still saying that they have been effective, that it works. So I'm coming back to the question and I'm backing up my opinion on it, okay? So what I'm saying here, um, so they use, sorry, demonstrations in the streets such as roadblocks and these, I suppose these demonstrations, these protests have been very effective because President Macron has announced changes in the tax system in France thanks to thanks to the demands of Le Gilets Jaunes. So there's my evidence. This is hanging out to my relevance marks for the question, okay? So then we've got de même manière, in the same way, or similarly, I suppose. Ici en Irlande, beaucoup d'étudiants. Now please, you might want to mark for yourselves there if you maybe struggle with this or maybe just scribble it down. The word beaucoup, I don't even get a marker just saying so you know what I'm talking about. Um, the word beaucoup, so apologies for scribbling all over the word. So beaucoup will only ever be followed by the words de, de, or de apostrophe if the next word starts with a vowel. Okay, it's never going to be followed by like the word like de, like des, or du, do, anything like that. I'm just saying a lot of, okay? So here in Ireland, a lot of students, on sauter la classe, sauter la classe is literally translated as to jump class. Um, but it would, we would use it as a way to like they've skipped class, okay? So have skipped class to protest in the streets in Dublin. Pour stimulate, that's a lovely way instead of um, just saying to make changes, to stimulate, to encourage changes. Um, chez le gouvernement irlandais, chez can be used, obviously we know that can be used for like your house or your home. If I was going to say chez les jeunes, it'd be like among young people, okay? So I'm trying to actually say like within the government, okay? So within the Irish government with regards to climate change. Il y avait un grand sens de l'unité chez... Okay, so there was a great, a very big sense of unity among the 11,000 students qui ont pris parti, that took part. Et les manifestations ont eu beaucoup de pouvoir. So there's that word pouvoir again, guys, okay? And the demonstrations had a lot of power. They had a lot of effect. They were very powerful, okay? So just to finish up then, we've got en conclusion. The succès des mouvements comme les Gilets jaunes et les pouvoirs des élèves en Irlande sont la preuve dont nous avons besoin que les manifestations pacifiques sont un bon moyen. So again, coming back to the question, getting those keywords into the examiner's head at the end of my question, and um, so that they feel as though it's been very relevant and it's been very cohesive. Okay, sont un bon moyen de protester contre l'injustice. Again, question words ou contre des décisions politiques. Il faut que. Okay. I will end the subjunctive. I'm going to show off to you, okay? So, il faut contravailler. Now, even though that looks the exact same, that is me using the subjunctive, okay? Il faut contravailler ensemble plus de futur pour un monde plus juste et pacifique. Et comme les Français disent, qui vivra verra. If I was your examiner and you ended your opinion piece like that, I might propose to you. I don't know, okay? Like, that is just, like, gorgeous, okay? But what I'm saying here, right? So, in conclusion, the success of the movements, okay? such as the Gilets Jaunes, and the power of the students in Ireland sont la preuve, are the proof dont nous avons besoin. And the reason that word dont is there because the verb to need in French is avoir besoin de. Okay, literally to have need of, right? So I have to then say in French, right? Um, are the proof of which we have need. So that word dont there means like of which, okay? So of which we have need or which we need, 
but that these peaceful protests are a good way to uh, protest against injustice or against political decisions, okay? So again, relevant, 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 okay? We must work together more in the future. Il faut um, qu'on travaille ensemble plus au futur for a more fair, plus juste, a more fair and peaceful world. But as the French say, and this is me like laying it on thick for the examiner, being like, I will get my like phrases into my answer and I'm going to come back to France, okay? But as the French say, qui vivra, verra, that literally translates as he who lives will see, but we would say in English, only time will tell. And that is just like if you're doing Irish and you have to use your shan uncle, all these kind of things, it's the same idea and it just really helps to differentiate your answer against someone who doesn't have those kind of idiomatic um, words and phrases in their answer, okay? So, um, guys, what I would do then with regards to that, like I got you to do the last activity there for your last lesson, I would have a look through that answer and just really hone in on nearly trying to market yourself, like where have I you know, like, where have I answered the question? Where have I used the buzzwords? Um, you might want to have a look through if there's any language points in it, any grammar points that you don't understand. Maybe mark them for yourselves and message me and I can send you a voice note just explaining them to you. Um, but I think that that's a lovely answer. Again, it is a little bit long. Um, you'll know if you're in my grounds or in my day school, I like the answers that I give you to be slightly longer so you can see as much of the vocab being used um, just as possible for that topic. But if you are com like confident and competent enough to write an answer that's long, that long that's absolutely fine but you need to make sure that you're staying relevant the whole way throughout okay so that's why i want you to go through that and just see okay where has katie actually answered the question um, and why would the examiner not dock any marks for irrelevance okay so guys i hope that helps a little bit and um, next class is going to be something a little bit different um, so we can leave the opinion piece for a while and again if you have any questions just either leave a comment here or message me on my teaching Instagram or get in touch with the school's Instagram. Um, I'm more than happy to help and stay calm. Everything's going to be fine. See you later.